excited about today for several reasons. One, um, I'm going to talk about a young man, and I think, I hope he's here. Will you do this? Can I still talk about it today? <laughs> Uh, and then a special little bit from Chris McCarthy. Okay. So let's pray and we'll stand and worship, all right? Father God, we are grateful for a morning in which we were reminded about your life, the newness of life in you, God. Uh, as, as I know, parts of the country and the world are still dealing with winter in several different ways, God. Uh, Father, we wake up this morning, uh, again, reminded that the sun continues to shine. And that is S-U-N and S-O-N. Father, you continue to shine on us, God. We thank you for how much you love us and how much you continue to pursue us each and every day. Father, we love you and we thank you. As we stand to worship, may we uh, let our hearts be glad and joyful because of who you are in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's stand and sing.
hour last week for the music. It was just, it was just like a full blast. We see, last week we didn't have a key to get into the I lost the I found the key. So we had, we had, we didn't have any practice in because we couldn't get, we couldn't even get into the theater to the church I think it's back here. Oh, right here. Yeah. Oh, somebody should also have a show of that one. Check, check.
that one's a musically challenging song, <laughs> but a fun one.
Jesus, that you adore our worship, Lord. God, that we would come before you the cross this morning, Lord, where graces abound. Lord, that we can lay our problems and our fears and our worries, our shortcomings, and all those things at your feet, Lord. I thank you, God, that you are a God of forgiveness. God, that the same power that existed before with the apostles, Lord, in the Bible that we read about, is still with us, Jesus. God, that you still touch people, you still save people, you still deliver people, you still heal people, you still change people, and many here can attest to that. And so, Lord, we just, we worship you with this song at the foot of the cross.
Thanks for the worship moments today, you guys. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a little treat for you today. Not my treat, but another treat. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and receive our offering this morning. And so uh, the ushers would come for you. How's everybody doing? Good. I probably don't need to tell the ushers to come forward. I mean, you've been doing this for 30 years. I think they know by now, right? <laughs> All right. Bless you guys. Well, let's just pray and we'll move forward. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can lay our burdens, Lord, before you this morning, Jesus. Thank you for that song. Such a beautiful song, God. And it's been a long time since we've done it. And Lord, I just pray it would stick in people's heads today as they leave, that they think of the words and sing the melody as they go through their week. And Jesus, we just ask you to bless those that really need a blessing today. And I, I lift up our missionary friends that are trying to find a place in McCall um, for summer work. And, and Lord, I just pray you open the doors for them and just do a miracle, Lord, because it is a miracle getting a rental in McCall. And, and just, just do a miracle for them because that's where they're supposed to be for six months. So, I just pray, Lord, for them. Lift them up today. And Jesus, we just love you and thank you for all you've done for us. You've blessed us so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're, we're going to do a song for you, and then I'm going to introduce somebody. And, and do we have the words on this one, Bert, on St. Kind of I can find them. If you do, you can put, put them up. So this song kind of goes with what we're going to be hearing about today. So we kind of pulled it out last minute, kind of fits for for what uh, we're going to be talking about today. So I'm um, singing along with this. So we've done it a few times before, but it's been a while. So. Are you ready to go? All right. It was his fault. What happens when you play with one of these? The Lord's bringing you a Are you ready? I can see the water's raging. Same power that moves mountains when you speak. 
So let's give her a big warm welcome. And welcome to our first today.
Alright. It's amazing what happens when I touch microphones. Alright. And my mom, just a little tidbit for you, she was a amazing opera singer. No joke, I mean like big time. She she wanna miss you a line. And she sang opera. And she got picked up by this big guy, guy from New York who was going to take her to New York for the, for the Metropolitan Opera and all. She was singing in the Seattle Opera. And so that's where I got my pipes. But when we were kids, <laughs> when we were kids, we would sit in church, like my little guy Logan and stuff, and she would sing. And she's got this amazing opera voice. But none of us boys were into opera, if you know what I mean, in the 80s. It was like Motley Crue, you know, like, can we sing some Van Halen in church? And she get up, you know, and we, you know, we just, we just were into it. But she is an amazing musician. And my dad actually played drums, so he's the one that got Mark started, so that's kudos to him. So. Anyway, all right, punch one out for us, Mom. You know, we, we saw people delivered and healed, and we really believed in the power of God. But I've been through something that I'm going to share today with you um, for about nine months. And uh, interesting, that's a gestation period for a birth. I, I saw that the other day, and someone else said something to me about that. But I've been going through something for nine months, and God has completely and totally healed me. And it was a miraculous deal. It wasn't something where I went to the doctor and took certain uh, things and got well, or I had surgeries and got well. But this was something that happened literally overnight. Um, I'd been going through this for nine months, getting more miserable by the day. Uh, you know, you'd see me in church looking fine, and I'd be, you know, praising God as I love to do, but my body was tense and shaky. Uh, I was in deep depression, just all kinds of things were happening to me. Um, and I didn't obey something that the Bible tells us to do. The Bible says, if any among you are sick, call for the elders of the church, and they will lay hands on you in the prayer of faith, and the sick will be healed. And I don't know why I didn't do that. Um, I, I wasn't in a very good frame of mind those months, and I got worse as time went on. I got very hopeless. Um, I began to feel, I didn't feel the love of Jesus. I didn't feel God's love at all. I was grasping for it every time you know, I prayed, but it wasn't there. I was waking in the night at 2 and 3 in the morning, couldn't sleep, be awake all night, struggling with pain, anxiety, all kinds of things. And I kept asking God, what have I done? I didn't know better than to ask that question. These things happen to us, and it's not because of something we've done. It isn't necessarily because of sin. You know, someone asked Jesus, is this is sickness that this man has... Uh, is it because of some sin? And Jesus said, no, it's it's for the glory of God. It's going to be for the glory of God when he's healed, in other words. Well, I believe that's what my case was. Um, uh, I, I repented of everything I could think of to repent of. You know? uh, and I still didn't feel this. Though. I didn't feel close. I, the depression got worse. Um, and, I, and the Lord began to show me, just hang in there. There's a reason for this, and there's a reason I'm not healing you. There's a reason. And that's when, I don't know if you remember a few months ago, um, I got up and I, I just had such a burden for people that I knew were going through deep, deep, hard things. Um, and the Lord had given me this scripture in Luke, um, Luke 22, 31. It was when Jesus was going to go to the cross, and he knew that Peter... Uh, who had been so faithful to him and strong. He knew that Peter was going to fail. He knew that Peter was going to deny him three times. And he told Peter, he said, Simon, which was Peter's other name, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, to sift you as wheat. Now, who is it that did this to Peter? I want you to keep this in mind. Who did this to Peter? Satan. 
I believe Satan had a great deal to do, if not entirely to do with what I went through the last nine months. And they got the yoke of bondage had to be broken. It had to be broken, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute. So Jesus warned Peter he was really going to have to go through a hard time and that he was going to allow Satan to sift Peter like wheat. He says, but I have prayed for you. See, Jesus is the intercessor. He sits at the right hand of the Father and he prays for us day in and day out. He, the Bible says he intercedes for us. We've got to remember that when we're going through things. He intercedes for us. If we can't stand it anymore, we've got to remember, Jesus, you're praying for me, aren't you? So I know something's going to happen. Because Jesus' prayers are perfect, and the Father always answers Jesus' prayers. But I've prayed for thee that thy faith not fail. See, Jesus prayed for Peter that he didn't get so discouraged that he gave up and didn't believe anymore. And I came to that point where I, I didn't think I was going to be healed, and I began to say to the Lord, if this is going to go on, I'm 77, if this is going to go on to the end of my life, just please take me home. I, I began to pray that, how bad it was. He says, but I'm going to pray that your faith not fail and that when your trial is over, you're going to turn around and strengthen others. And I, I read that to you. I don't know how many of you remember, but several of you came up to me afterwards and said, I needed to hear that. I really needed to hear that. I'm going through such and such. And I needed to hear that it's going to be over and that there's a reason for it and that what I've gone through is going to help others. So... I have hung on to this scripture, believing somehow God was going to do something for me, but I didn't know how. Well, I don't know, four weeks ago on a Sunday after, after Sunday after church, uh, Kim, who was like a daughter to me, she was in our youth group 40 years ago, or was it about 30 ago? 30? 30? 30, 30 years ago. I'm sorry. 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, 20 years ago. Okay. Her since she was 14, and she's very dear to me. And she came up to me and she said, Chris, I just can't stand to see you this way anymore. This is just, it's just, can we pray for you? I said, Well, sure. So she said, I want to get some people to go in the prayer room and pray for you. And uh, so she gathered up, her, got to gather people up, and Bill and Jennifer went in, and uh, my sons went in, and Kim and Mike, uh, Lewis, I can't remember, Polly, I can't remember all who, who went in, but we had uh, probably a group of 10 people went in there. And they laid, I just confessed to them, I said, I'm totally, um, I'm beyond discouraged. I'm, I'm so, I, I would rather die and go be with Jesus than go on like this. Uh, I don't feel God, I confess to them, I don't feel God's love, which is was really strange for me. I always felt God's love. But, they laid hands on me and they prayed the prayer of faith and I wasn't healed immediately. In fact, I had a terrible week. But the interesting thing is that Lewis said, hey, how many would be willing to fast this week for Chris? And I thought, wow, yeah, we never, we never talk about fasting. Bill's going to be talking about fasting. But Lewis asked people to pray and fast and everybody in that room said, I'll take a day, I'll take a day. It was so it was so heartwarming to me. I can't tell you what it meant to me. And everybody agreed to fast at least two meals a day, which is fine. That was very it was very biblical. In the Bible, lots of times they said fast uh, till till evening. Fast till evening. So they agreed to fast two uh, meals. And during that time, Lewis said, be sure you're praying during that time that you're fasting, because it's fasting and prayer that does it. So that next week, I knew that people were praying for me. I knew they were fasting. I didn't feel any better. In fact, I had a horrible week. And I went to bed Friday night thinking, oh, I don't know. Everybody's been fasting and praying all week. Lady of, you know, great woman of faith. <laughs> I woke up Saturday morning. And <laughs> Everything was gone. All the anxiety that I had been waking up with, all the pain, all the depression, the hopelessness, was gone. And I said to us, I said, 
that's I feel normal. Even my, my mind, I can't even go into how my mind had gotten so messed up. I was having such terrible nightmares every night. I would wake up at two in the morning and, and just my, my body would be stressed and tense like this and I couldn't stop it. I'd go, go have a hot bath and uh, go out and exercise in the living room. I got so I exercised every day, which was good. It's out of desperation. But nothing would stop it. And I woke up that morning and everything was gone. I was in the least bit stressed, anxiety, no anxiousness, uh, no pain, no muscle stiffness, no depression, on and on. And I, I, for a while I couldn't believe it. But as the day went on, or as the morning went on, I began to have this joy bubble up in me that I had just had a biblical miracle. And it was due to people fasting and praying for me. So I began to look into fasting because we should know all about fasting. Jesus said, when you fast. He didn't say, if you fast. Jesus said to the disciples, when you fast. And uh, so he, he expected us to fast. That was something that they've been doing, you know, they've been fasting and praying. Uh, and they fasted and prayed in the Old Testament. Uh, in the kings, the prophets, the leaders uh, in the Old Testament called fasts often. They would call a solemn assembly, meaning get the whole congregation in on this because this power of the enemy has to be broken. There has to be a breakthrough here. And they would call a fast. And sometimes they would call a fast for seven days, but usually it was it was fast till evening or, or fast three days. In Esther's case, when Esther was going through uh, her horribly difficult time was facing going in to uh, speak for the Jews to her husband, who was not a Jew, um, the king, King Artaxerxes. Uh, she was terrified to go in to him and ask him to have mercy on the Jews. Because if you went into the king and he wasn't in the mood to see you and didn't hold out the golden scepter to you, you were dead. They killed you. So Esther had reason to be fearful and need God's strength. And she asked Mordecai, her uncle, she asked him to call all the Jews to prayer and fasting, and she asked her handmaidens to fast for three days. And of course, I don't know if you know the story of Esther, but it's amazing because miracles happened as a result of that fast. <coughs> but no greater a miracle than what happened to me. That's what I can't get over. I just keep daily saying, I can't believe what happened. Yes, I do believe. We have to start saying we do believe. That God heals. God breaks bondages. But I firmly believe that there's something about fasting that we haven't gotten yet. Or we've lost. Because when anything very important and very devastating and impossible situations were going on in the Old Testament or the New Testament, people were called to fast. And it was usually the leaders that called to fast. Um, in the New Testament, you know, as I said, in Matthew 6, 16, Jesus said, when you fast. So that tells us that Jesus expects us to fast. Why? Because he wants us to go hungry more. Because he knows of the power of a fast. Whatever the fast does, some people say, well, it humbles us. Well, two meals probably isn't going to humble you all that much. But it does something. It's like honoring what God has asked us to do. And when you're fasting and you're praying during the time that you're fasting, God is very honored by that. And he chooses to do something for us. And I know, I've talked to some of you, I know some of you are going through horrible times. Very, very, very <clears throat> difficult times. You're heartbroken, or you're in a deep depression, or you're going through a divorce, or you've lost a loved one. There are so many grievous circumstances right here in this little church. And I'd like to see us, and, and Bill's going to talk to you more about this, I'd like to see us begin a ministry of fasting. Uh, Lewis and I have talked about this. Lewis had the same, same idea, so we hope it's from the Lord. We'd like to start a ministry of fasting, and that you could be a part of that. Because as I say, the kings in the Old Testament called the whole assembly to be a part of it. And I'd like to see how many bondages would be broken 
not only in this church, but in other, in people, you know, outside of the church. But we have so many things that aren't getting broken. People are having physical ailments that just aren't changing. They're having depression, all kinds of things. I'd like to see what would happen if, and we thought, since everybody for my, the fast for me, they just fasted two meals. And they signed up for one day of that week. So that person only had to fast on Monday, two meals. Another person fasted on Tuesday for two meals. And that's all that there would be to it. And there's nobody in here who couldn't do that, is there? Really. So I'm hoping that you'll pray about this. I'm hoping that you will really take this to God and say, God, I don't really want to fast. I really get hungry when I don't eat. I understand that. I'm the same way. I'm a terrible faster. My husband could fast for three, four days or longer. I never have been able to do that. But two meals, I could do and pray during that time. If I thought I was going to be a part of somebody's healing or the breaking of the power of depression over somebody or those of us who are older and losing our memories, <laughs> you could pray for us. But what I'd like to see, Louis and I had talked that perhaps people could give us what they need prayer for or whoever they know of that needs a desperate situation. Not a cold, not a flu, but a desperate situation that just hasn't been broken. And those would be things that we would put out and, and every, the team for one week would fast and pray that week. And then the next week would be a different team. So you probably only have to fast one day a month if enough people signed up. Anyway, that's our plan and, and uh, Jill's going to talk more about that. But during that time, during the nine months, as depressed as I got, as miserable as I felt, um, lots of people didn't know. I mean, I'd come to church and still praise the Lord and, and uh, smile at people and greet people. But I was miserable inside. I was shaking. I was tense. Uh, I was depressed. Uh, my brain didn't work right. I don't know how to explain that. Uh, but it, it, seriously, it did something. Uh, it really devastated my health. My doctor said, you've lost so much muscle. We're going to have to really work to get your muscle back. It's going to take a year. I lost muscle because I couldn't eat. I, went, I lost 22 pounds, and I didn't have 22 pounds to lose. But I lost 22 pounds because I couldn't eat. And um, um, I lost the kind of thought. I probably wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, sorry. I believe that when we fast, that there's a bondage. If the Bible speaks of a spirit of bondage. Did you know that? It's a spirit. A spirit of bondage. And the Bible also speaks of breaking the yoke. The yoke was what they put on oxen and to guide them, and it was very heavy. And sometimes Satan puts that yoke <laughs> on us. He puts a yoke on us that we just can't get out from under and we don't know what to do about. We can pray, we'll get discouraged. And sometimes it takes the brethren to come in and join us in our plight and help us. And that's what this group of ten did that week for me. They came in and they, they shared my burden. And that's what we want to do. We want to share people's burdens. We don't want people going through burdens, these burdens alone. We don't want people going through things alone in this church. So I pray that we can all, that God will speak to all of us to, to be willing to spend one day out of a month and miss two meals. You can miss one meal. God doesn't care. One or two meals, three meals, Two days, whatever you want to do, as long as you are fasting, as long as you are praying. The song that uh, Kim and, and, and Brian uh, sang, uh, I, I just love it. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. The same power that commands the dead to wake. The same power that calms a raging sea. That one is the line that hit me. That calms a raging sea. Sometimes I felt like there was a raging sea in me of anxiety and depression, hopelessness. And that power broke the yoke. It broke the bondage that was upon me. And I believe so strongly what Jesus said to Peter, that he is praying for us, that our faith doesn't fail, Mine was about to fail when Kim came up to me that day. My sons had been praying for nine months. One of my sons said, Mom, 
the kids and I have been praying, my wife had been praying for all these nine months, morning and evening, and nothing happened. And I said, I know. And that's because I believe God wants to show us something about fasting. I think until we fasted, this thing wasn't going to break. So we have something to learn about fasting. And uh, Bill's going to be talking about fasting, and I'm so glad, because I have a lot to learn, too. All I know is it broke the yoke over a bondage over me, and it got healed me instantaneously. I believe I've had a miracle as powerful and wonderful as the blind man, blind Bartimaeus, or any of the, the healings in the Bible that Jesus just spoke or just touched, or the apostles did, and it was done. That's, that's what happened to me. And I want to give all, God all the glory. Um, none of us get the glory from this. We did what we were supposed to do. I hung in there. I kept saying, Lord, I'm not going to, no matter if I die from this. And my doctor told me after all this was over and I witnessed to her. I don't know if she's a Christian or not. But I witnessed to her because she had tried everything. She had uh, put me on adrenal therapy and she wanted to send me to an internist. I went to a hormone specialist, and uh, I'm like the woman, you know, that, that went to doctors for years and years, and finally touched the hem of Jesus' garment and was healed. Um, but all these things, uh, you know, when I woke up that morning, I had been on Boost Bar, which is an antidepressant, not, not an anti well kind, but mostly anti-anxiety. I haven't needed one bit of Boost Bar since that morning. I haven't needed one bit of Boost Bar for three weeks. I just went off of it just like that. Um, but I, I was going to say, my family prayed so faithfully. Friends who knew how, what I was going through prayed so faithfully. And none of those prayers are lost. None of those prayers were prayers that God didn't hear. Those were prayers that were being bottled up, I believe, for us to get to the place where somebody finally spoke, as Lewis did, we need to fast. Because I believe God was trying to speak to us about fasting, and maybe he wanted to use me to do that. I don't know. It's okay. I told him when I was going through it, Lord, if you're using me for something, it's okay. But if not, please either let me go home or heal me. And through that time, all I could do was to continue to praise him and trust him. I just said every so many, so many times a day, when I was in misery and trying to exercise all the stress off and all that, I would say, I trust you, I trust you no matter what. Two in the morning, three in the morning, when I woke up and couldn't go back to sleep and was in pain and anxious, terrible anxiousness, um, weird thoughts, strange things in my mind, weird pictures. It, it, it did a number on all parts of my body. Um, I would say, I trust you. I refuse to be overcome by this. I trust you that you have an answer for me. And that's this song. Uh, it says, you know, I will not be overcome. I will not be overtaken. I will not be overcome. I, I think that's an important prayer to pray when we're going through something. I will not be overcome, Satan, by what you're trying to do to me. Because my God is faithful. My God is faithful. Even if it takes nine months, he's faithful. I've seen him work. Miracles. Years and years and years ago, I had a miracle. We went to a, a pastor's conference somewhere, and the, the speaker was uh, Mario Murillo, who I just loved. He, uh, he was speaking, and he was right in the middle of his sermon, and I was crying. We, well, actually, we were, no, he wasn't in the middle of his sermon. He was in the middle of praise and worship. And I was uh, praising him because I was in a lot of pain. I'd gone through something really difficult in the church, and I was just going through a lot. And he stopped the, the praise and worship team and he said, Would the lady in the would the lady in the maroon sweater please step out in the aisle? And I'm just <laughs> crying and didn't even know you didn't know who he's talking about. Forgot that I had on the maroon sweater. <laughs> so Buzz does like this and he says, Honey, that's you. And Brian was standing the other said, Mom, that's you. And I'm going, No, I don't want to stand out in the aisle. You know. So I stood out in the aisle and I couldn't quite quit crying. And he says, you have been through, and he told me exactly what I had been through as a pastor's wife, which pastor's wives go through difficult things. He told me exactly what I had been through in so many words. He said, God is going to heal you today. 
He said, it's going to heal you of your TMJ. I didn't even know why my jaws hurt and I couldn't chew. I didn't even know what TMJ was. And he says, God is going to heal you of TMJ. God is going to heal that elbow that hurts. I haven't even told Buzz my elbows hurt. Because it was like, oh my gosh, just one more thing. It's embarrassing. But he spoke things that only God could know. And I walked out of there healed. No more TMJ. So I have experienced that was 25 years ago. So it's been a long time since I've experienced a healing like that. But God is healing. As Brian said today, up here, God is still healing today. He's still delivering people from the power of the enemy in so many ways. And we, we need to be a church who believes that, practices it. I'd like to have testimonies going out from this church saying, our prayer team, our prayer and fasting team prayed for this person for a week and they were set free. Or at least they got a lot better. I'd like that word to go out because that's what Jesus told us to do. And we want to be that kind of a church. We want to be a church that we know God's power. And people hear and see that God is working his power through our prayers and fasting. Thanks. and just said, uh, you know, next week I'll uh, bring up a sign-up sheet. She said, oh, good, because I wrote this really lame one up back there. And I'm going to put it out there just because of the impact of what you... has nothing to do with the... This is fine. Uh, but I think that if this has spoken to you, um, I want to make sure that I don't miss anybody. That we don't have uh, an opportunity placed place before you to be a part of this uh, prayer and fasting kind of process. So I'm going to put it back. Zach, would you come get this for me and, and put it right back on the table? I think there's a pen there. Thank you. Uh, if you are led to be a part of this and you're thinking, well, Bill, I don't even understand it yet. Uh, and that's okay. We're not going to really kick that into gear until we teach a little bit more about it. Okay? Um, I remember the first time I ever fasted, uh, Jennifer, how long have we been married? Maybe when, when, we, when you about a year or so, um, and she'd been, she's, she had fasted before, and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm in, I'll fast with you. How many days are you going to go? Oh, five. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Um, and if you've ever fasted, um, the first day is kind of like, it's not a really big suffering, but you feel it, you know, you feel it. It's, in the middle of day two, every food ad, every smell, everything starts to come out. And, and it's really important that the second part of this fasting is a part of what we do, and that it's prayer. Because fasting without prayer is just a diet. Fasting with prayer is unlocking God's tools. That's huge. That's what I just heard Chris talk about, is unlocking things. Um, so uh, well, over the next few weeks, we'll probably be finding a way for you to have something in the bulletins to write down things that might be... Uh, a part of your life that you would like to have be prayed for and fasted for. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to make sure we have out in front of this is prayer for this church, fasting for this church, uh, the direction of this church. You know, I've been here for 10 years, and I think we've, we've done well. We've done lots of things, but I think God expects and wants more from our church. And so I, that's going to be something I'm going to be putting into it, that we fast and we pray for the direction of our church family. Uh, in Acts, uh, as Paul and Barnabas are set out, before they ever send them out, they fast and pray for them before they are ever sent out. So when we minister, when we serve, when we gather together, there is a, an aspect of this very important practice that is so biblical. Uh, but it's almost like, uh, and people who have been in churches for a long time will often say, ah, we still do that? Prayer and fasting, we still do that kind of stuff? And it is so foundational to our faith. Um, but it is something like Chris said. Don't, I don't want to say don't be afraid of it. Uh, there are certain, I'm going to talk about this over the next week or so, and that is there are certain circumstances when someone should not go without food. Okay? There are certain circumstances in which something else can be fasted from. Okay? And I'll talk about it next week. But even fasting from television, even fasting from our cell phone, a technology, social media, all of those things can be something to be fasted from. Food is probably the one that's talked about all the time because it creates a physiological reminder that you're hungry. And it's in those moments that we are reminded to pray and that we should 
be so prayerful in the process. So I'm excited to do that um, and go through the next few, uh, few weeks talking about prayer and fasting and, and uh, really see a rising up. You know, we pray every Sunday morning at 930 in here. And uh, uh, there's times when I get discouraged and I take my eyes off of those who are there. When I sit and I visit with and we pray together, I take my eyes off of who's, I take my eyes off of who's there and focus on who's not there. And I'm reminded that prayer is exactly what needs to be done. And I love how you worded this this morning. And that is that no prayer is ever unfruitful. It might get bottled up. God never thought of that before like that. And, and waiting for that cork to be popped from fasting. And so I'm excited about that for our church, for my place in this church, for us and our future, for healing, for uh, overcoming the bondage that's there. Um, I'm probably not going to start on it next week, but Isaiah 58 reveals an awful lot about fasting. And it is, it is absolutely about what it's not supposed to be and what it can be. So it, if I don't get to it next week, the following week is when I'm going to be uh, looking at Isaiah 58. And it does talk about the bondage in there. And it talks about um, the aspect that is so important for our ability to serve others, to love others well, to step in God's place. What would God do? And oftentimes, uh, when we fast, one of the purposes behind it is that we might hear and understand God more clearly and be able to communicate and ask for help and directions. So I'm excited for this. And and uh, we prayed for you this morning, Chris, as you as you were getting ready. I know you came in and then scattered out of there real quickly, but we prayed for you um, to come up and share your heart, which you did. Um, and we share in the victory that you have experienced. Um, and I'm grateful for people to say, hey, we need to pray. I'm grateful when folks come up and do that. And then for Lewis to say, let's go further than this and do something more that's biblical, and that's less fast. And so I'm excited for, the, for our church family, uh, for, for some of you who might have issues going on. And Chris talked about either depression or anxiety or physical or other physical ailments, uh, marital issues, uh, relational issues, financial issues. All of those things are aspects that we can certainly put before God and are expected to put before God coupled with prayer and fasting. So I'm excited for that. Um, would you, um, can I ask you two to come up here? Pastor Buzz and Chris. Buzz, Buzz looked at me like. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the who me's like Mad Magazine. Um, for those of you who don't know Buzz and Chris, uh, Brian gave a little bit of an insight to to this couple, uh, but they have pastored and led and ministered and s sacrificed so much in their lives for about how long? Forty years. 40 years, uh, and have testimony of their, their sons and their families, testimonies of, of other daughters from other families that are 50 years old, is that what I'm maybe sloppy? No, no, 60 years old. 35. But Buzz and Chris, this is their church, and I know they won't want me to say it like that. It is God's church, but they are the ones who, Buzz left a lucrative position, and said, let's do this church thing. And uh, they've been doing it ever since. Yeah. <laughs> and let me be the first to tell you that it's not easy. It is not an easy thing. Uh, and so people praying for leaders is, is vital. Uh, people praying for what's going on in our families, what we're called to do. And I'm grateful for these two because I've shared before how they brought hope back in the uh, Jennifer and I's life one time. And more than once, but one time specifically. Uh, so I would like to ask you that, that we continue to pray uh, for Chris and Buzz, but for other things that are unsaid yet. We're going to come across some of those, and you will be offered the opportunity to ask for prayer with your names if you want or not, because God knows who you are. Uh, but we want to be able to lift things up. And so right now, what I'm going to do is pray for Buzz and Chris. Uh, a prayer of gratitude, of gratefulness for them. Uh, their leadership, their sacrifice for so many people over 40 years uh, of, of being up in the middle of the night working with people who are uh, needing something, uh, working throughout all times of rest. There is no rest uh, for pastors and their wives. Uh, and so being able to continue to pray for them, I think, is vitally important. You were ministered to today by someone who shared something that is part of our lives. All of us can attest to that. 
that the same power that rose Jesus from the grave resides in us, the power of the Holy Spirit. So, um, I'm sure Brian, you, you and your family might want to come up, but if anybody's led to come up and stand with them, let's do that real quickly. Everybody else, just stand up where you are, okay? And we'll close with this. And if you know Brian, you know that these two need a lot more prayer. Uh, just, just, can you imagine raising this young man? Wow. <laughs> I'll say that just because I know what my folks must be doing. All right, let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful for the testimony today that Chris has shared. Uh, those of us who have been kind of close by and have known that she's been going through so many things and such a struggle. Uh, God, that we only, even knowing it here is only a glimpse uh, of what's been going on. And so God, I am grateful for the movement of the Holy Spirit and people to say, Chris, we need to pray for you right now. And also, let's go a little bit further and fast. And for people to commit to doing that. I'm grateful, God, that um, on Saturday morning, following the Friday night, I'm going, I don't know, man. Uh, the next morning being relieved of everything. Father, you are still busy healing. You are still busy always restoring. And God, we thank you for being that kind of a God. And we thank you for Buzz and Chris. Uh, their service to you and to your people. Their service to uh, the people in this valley and far beyond. And, and particularly to their family. Uh, Father, for being examples of who you are. For moving in their lives in such powerful ways. We thank you, God, that this morning we hear of a great testimony of healing. And a reminder that you are still busy. Regardless of what we might think. Father, over the coming weeks, I pray, God, that you would lead me in the direction you would have me go as far as talking about and preaching about uh, fasting. That, God, we as a family would rise up uh, and be part of a ministry that has such great power uh, because it's you working in us. Father, we love you and we thank you and we love this couple. We are grateful for this family and their, and their leadership amongst us. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said. Amen. 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 If you are interested, that tablet is back there. Uh, to sign up, just put your name down. It doesn't mean you're starting this week. This week we'll start getting names. God bless you. You're interested in this? Yeah. Uh, that's my Can I get you to like write your name down and email or contact someone? Just set up an appointment here at the meeting. I'm not going to leave you up there by yourself. Right? Yeah. We'll go through it a couple times on like Sundays and things like that. It's just that you know, you're going to have to do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, perfect. So, okay. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to you and uh, find a time that works for you and uh, kind of go through one and then we'll have to and watch you and do it. It's, it's, not, it's not that difficult. The, the most difficult thing is what you'll see is sometimes the music, the, the words are a little behind the music. Because they're not really in a row, and you have different singers, so it'll jump from the first to the so you just kind of trying to follow along with them. It's just, it's just what the way it is. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. I appreciate it, James. I appreciate it very much.